thanks to the supporters of channel member Jacob Barnett. I really don't want to alarm anybody, but uh, 10 games of the season left and we're still top of the Premier League. Hello, welcome to part 15 of my FM 24B to save with Brighton. I'm Kevin coming up on today's episode. Top of the table clashes. It's always top of the table clashes these days because we're top of the table and everyone else is trying to clash with us. Um, we're going to be playing Arsenal, who are, I mean, they're down in fourth, but only one place below us in the league. We've then got a bunch of cup games that I'll do off camera because I don't think anyone needs to see me play Verdun or Forest. But then we'll be back nearly, nearly a month later for Chelsea, who are currently down in fifth place. If we are still top of the league at the end of this episode, we have got a real chance. Since you were last with me, this is what's gone on. We haven't quite maintained our long winning run that we'd been on, picking up a couple of defeats in the Premier League against Liverpool and Newcastle. Yeah, we still have this thing where we lose against the really, really good teams, but we have won all of our, our other matches. We're still in the FA Cup. That's the quarterfinal against Forest we've got coming up, obviously still in the Conference League as well, which we should be able to win with the reserves. That really is the plan at this stage. And as far as January transfers went, we still can't spend the money. We really are trying. Um, you'll know from the last episode that Osman uh, Diamandi came in for £69 million, and he has been really good, really enjoying having him knocking around the place. Off the back of that, we were able to sell Gatti, um, and he went somewhere. Why can't I find him? Because, wow, how many players left the club in January? Um, he went to Al Nasser for £30. Five and a half million pounds. Um, it, very quickly afterwards, we also um, sent Thiago Almada back to Boca. They spent two and a half million pounds to loan him earlier in the year. Another five million pounds to loan him now. And we have multiple future fees and things like that tied into this as well. An optional future fee, fee at £36 million. Pounds. Otherwise, we'll just charge them to loan him back again. Um, we then had... Um, and CISO decided that he wanted to leave because he wasn't getting game time. Um, so he's gone out on loan to Getafe, where he started really well. They do have a really low optional future fee because I just wanted to get him out. He's caused us trouble before. He was getting grumpy again, getting him out of the club. But based on how he started, I really hope they don't pay the future fee. Um, and then we went and got Rico Lewis back. Rico Lewis, who of course wasn't loan with us last year, didn't want to join us permanently. We got him back on loan and he did want to join us permanently. Um, We've immediately agreed to sign him permanently in the summer. The only thing is doing that has glitched the game out and he's not actually re-debuted for us yet since he returned on loan because he's played for Manchester City this season, then joined us on loan, then we've arranged the future transfer. And as it says there, he's ineligible and has been for every single match because a player under offer who's already played for another team in one season cannot play in the next match or he'll be ineligible for his new club. His new club is us. He can play for us and not be ineligible for us. And never mind the fact that future transfer happens in the summer. So it'll be next season anyway. But yeah, the game is glitched out. Bottom line though, Rico Lewis does join us for just shy of £40 million in the summer. So that solves the, the right back problem long term. We don't have him to use currently though, which is a pain in the trousers. Billy Gilmore's agreed to leave the club as well. He's going, going to Al Sad for £14 million in the summer. And then we just went Wonder Kid shopping. I talked a little bit about it on yesterday's episode, trying to bring in some 18-year-olds who'll eventually become homegrown at club so that we can move Lewis Dunk on and any other homegrown at club players in CISO as another example. So the first one is Joel Hato, who will be a direct replacement for Dunk, effectively. Um, he's a left-sided centre-back, can also play left-back for us, 18 years old, um, already a Dutch international, three caps for the Netherlands already. Um, we've signed him from Ajax. He'd been on loan at Southampton in the championship all season long had a minimum fee release clause so he's come in for 27 million pounds and he's straight in and around the first team squad and will eventually become homegrown at club so that's ideal and then Archie Gray another 18 year old wonder kid who I may have made my second balls up of the transfer window Rico Lewis obviously balls up number one balls up number two with Archie Gray is he's not going to become homegrown at club because we let him go back to Leeds on loan so we've spent 23 and a half million pounds to do his release clause let him stay at Leeds until the end of the season because I figured he's not going to get in the team why not keep morale high his birthday is in two weeks he'll turn 19 by the time he actually arrives here 
he won't have enough time to become homegrown at club, but he is a long-term central midfield, defensive midfield option for us. That I mean, he's an English wonder kid. An English wonder kid for less than £25 million with five-star potential. Absolute no-brainer. All that being said, though, we still have gazillions of pounds left to spend. Uh, we've got so much money left over in both budgets. It's mad. Um, don't worry too much about that. We're going to be in the Champions League next year. That problem's going to be solved. But... Squad building wise, everything going pretty well, apart obviously from the Rico Lewis and Archie Gray situations, which aren't ideal. But it's not stopped us on the pitch and hopefully won't stop us today. Arsenal are a team who have very recently been top of the league, heading to the Emirates. Going to be a tough one, but hopefully Emil Smith Rowe is going to go and show them why they shouldn't have let him go. So it's going to be Lucas Perry in goal, a back four of Estupinian Dunk, Diamande, and Walker Peters, Berg and Vermeer in ahead of him ahead of them, I guess. Fatty, Smithrow and Abada then supporting Ferguson up front. We have six players in the squad who are now in double figures for goals this season and Leon Bailey is only one goal away. We looked at it in the last episode about how effective any combination of our front four is and it's just continued. Goals flowing amongst all of them. Evan Ferguson hasn't been massively prolific on his own but the front four, whatever combination of the seven players we've got who can play there, whatever combination they go out in, they all play well. They all weigh in with goals. We're the top scorers in the Premier League. We've got the best goal difference in the Premier League. And Usman Diamande, I said that was going to be one of the things he could do when he first arrived. He would be a goal threat from these set pieces. And that is the first time he's demonstrated it for us. Very happy to see it happen when you lot are watching. Short corners again. And Sufati with the cross. Diamande's there at the far post to use his six foot three physical bulk to force the goal past the Arsenal goalkeeper. And now we're having another go at it. And this time, it was, I don't know if that was Walker Peters or Evan Ferguson who got on the end of that. Um, the way the header just kind of ballooned up and was never a threat suggests it was probably Walker Peters. If there had been some proper contact from Ferguson... Might have been a different story. I've just noticed as well, Arsenal playing Declan Rice at centre-back. Arsenal captain Declan Rice playing at centre-back. Seems like an unusual decision for them to have made and one that we're going to look to exploit. And uh, I think we've grabbed a second goal here. Was Dunk offside? The referee is just checking. Um, I would be surprised if he was from a set piece. He was. It's disallowed. Do we get to see a replay? Football manager? There we go. We can sit. So, see, he has... He's drifted ever so slightly offside there. Other than that, it was a nicely a nicely worked move. It's just the guy we were aiming for didn't read the instructions and realise he had to stay on side. What's gone on here? Lucas Perry's got a bruised hand but should be able to play through it. How important is a hand to a goalkeeper? These goalkeeper injuries in FM24 are a proper pain in the trousers, aren't they? Ansu Fati has picked up a knock as well now. I think we'll just leave him on until half-time and bring Leon Bailey on for him then, which... Like I say, we've got so many players who can play in this front four. It's not a massive problem if we have to change any of them. Obviously, we don't want any of them to end up with injuries that keep them out for a significant amount of time because they're all... One of the reasons we're doing so well is because we can use them interchangeably, keep them all fit. We're still in the Conference League. We're still in the FA Cup. We're rotating a lot. And it's working. We don't want to start picking up injuries now. Right, we're going to try another one of these pervert corners now. It's Emil Smith-Rowe, plays it back to Berg, and now Bailey goes past his man and fires it into that far corner. And that is Bailey now into the double figures club. That is all... Is that all seven of them? And now into double figures for goals for the season. João Pedro's probably not far behind either as the, as the eighth guy. And this is why... Because I know you're all going to tell me off in the comments section. This is why... I don't mind NC so leaving because we've just got free scoring, excellent attacking players, and he's just never going to get in the team for us. It's just, it's not really worked out for him here at Brighton in this save. We've built a team that has kind of grown beyond him before he's had a chance to fulfill his potential. Estupinian offers too much of the ball to Bakayo Saka there, and he plays it back to Kiwi. So it looks like Arsenal have realised playing Declan Rice in central defence was probably not the best plan they've ever had and they've actually brought on another defender. I don't know if Rice has been sacrificed or uh, or what the situation is regarding uh, regarding that. It doesn't look like there's a Rice around anywhere, though. So we've managed to force their captain off the pitch. Um, but the real captain looks like he's won a penalty, a stooping hand with a heavy tackle on him. Arguments that it might have been outside the penalty area. Come on, ref. 
Won't it be romantic if Brighton win the league? Don't be the man who spoils that for everybody. The referee loves romance. Confirmed. Arsenal with the free kick on the edge of the area. Stupinian is getting a little bit of a talking to. Look how close that was. Goodness me. And it's going to be Odegaard to take... Standing Saliba there is an interesting choice from the set piece. I mean, if he's not going to be in the middle trying to get on the end of it, just leave him back. I don't know that he was offering much from there, um, but it is now Arsenal with the corner. Martinelli with the in-swinger. Kiwior is the man there on the near post. It falls to Havertz. And I think that's taken a deflection on the way through. It says Perry has made the save, so it's going to be another corner for Arsenal. And this is some sustained Arsenal pressure here that we could... Uh, we could do with successfully defending again. Dunk heads it clear, but then Estupinian is beaten in the air by the uh, by the defensive substitute that Arsenal brought on, presumably at half time. Just towers over Estupinian. This is this is poor marking from us. He's got about eight inches on him, and there was never really any doubt there that he was going to get there ahead of Estupinian. It's now two one, and uh, Arsenal are quite good, aren't they? And this could potentially be problematic. They're changing things up again. There's still no sign of Declan Rice. I think he must have actually been taken off the pitch at half time. Smith Rowe trying to trying to do everything by himself to prove that he should never have been sold. Didn't really work out for him on that occasion. And now Arsenal again trying to build from the back. And it might be getting close to Tammy o'clock because Evan Ferguson not having a lot of joy out there today. A Stupinian can come off for Valley. Ferguson can come off for Tammy Abraham. Having six foot five Tammy on is going to be helpful when it comes to defending these set pieces that Arsenal seem to be bombarding us with as well. Um, but they are, I mean, they're, they're playing very well in this second half. I could really use a, a third goal for us just to take some of the edge off the nerves a little bit here because this, hang on. Right. I don't know if the microphone picked that noise up or not, but I do want to clarify this is my farting fuggler. That's what was making the noise in the background. I'm not sitting here being windy whilst recording the video. This guy obviously sent some motion and decided to... I mean, you can hear him. He's got some stomach problems. We're going to put him back in the corner and hope he doesn't do that again. Wasn't It was not me. Ah, well, but that, I tell you what, it took some of the stress out of the situation. There was no way I was going to leave... Just a, a rogue Trump in the video, though, and not acknowledge it because you lot would have leapt on it and I would have been all embarrassed because you would have thought that it was me. And it wasn't me. I can behave. I, I Let's face it. If it was me, I'd have edited it out. It didn't happen during a goal. It would have been fine. Um, right. Arsenal on the attack again. And Ketcher must be offside there, surely. Doesn't matter because he hit it with precisely zero welly straight into the hands of Perry. We've still got two more substitutions to make and I'm wondering who might be the best players to come on and just see us over the finish line in this match. Probably, mm, well, I don't really want to bring on any of these. I guess Schurz for Dunk. Schurz hasn't let us down. Um, I don't necessarily want to bring on Hato, though, and I don't want to take off Berg and bring on Andre, despite the fact liking Andre, Berg is more of a tackler. Um, so I guess the one we uh, we take off is Emil Smith-Rowe. He's done, he's done his best to try and have an impact against his former club. It hasn't really worked out for him today, so maybe having Sunset in there, who's likely to have a slightly cooler head because he's got nothing to prove, might just allow us to see this over the finish line. But it once again is a highlight stack with Arsenal. It has been all Arsenal in this second half. We are clinging on here. The comment section is probably screaming at me to go with a, a more defensive system. Park the bus! I, I can't. It's not in my makeup. I don't do park the bus. Look at the league table. It's working for us. We're Brighton and we're top of the league. Yes, we might throw this one away today, but on the whole, the whole refusing to park the bus thing seems to work for me. It might not be working today, though, because we are struggling here and we are under a huge amount of pressure, but Walker Peters gets the tackle in and our sunset, taking his time to find Abada, um, who tries to... Tries to go past Tommy Asu on that far side. And Tommy Asu not having any of it. But Tammy Abraham gets there ahead of the defender. It's Tammy one-on-one -on -one with Ramsdale. And he's hit the crossbar. Oh, the Tammy Abraham that was scoring for fun at the start of the season does not miss there. And I hope we don't live to regret that one. I don't think we're going to. I think we've got away with it. Tammy could have 
put a cherry on top at the end there. But the important thing is we come away with another win. We are in incredible form. Smithrow does get one over Arsenal. Fatty's going to miss a few weeks. Luckily, it's a few weeks of us playing in some cup games now. But that is the league table. Nine games to go. When you see me again... In a minute, the episode's not over, but I'm going to play these three matches, hopefully win them all, and then we'll be back for Chelsea. It's getting stressful. Well, as expected, three straight, very comfortable wins. 3-0, 5-0, 6-0. Uh, leaves us in the quarterfinals of the Conference League, where we're going to face Bayer Leverkusen again. We played them earlier in the season, if I recall. Beat them 5-2 in the league stage, so... You would hope that we should be able to navigate through that round. If we do, the semi-final will be us or Leverkusen versus, who's this? Someone from Romania or Red Bull Salzburg. It feels very winnable. I mean, Roma in the final, I guess, is where it becomes a little bit challenging. But they're 15th in Serie A at the moment. Did I mention we're doing quite well in the Premier League? Obviously, we've had a little bit of time off. Other games have been played while we've been faffing around in the Cups. But the most exciting thing is we've now got two games in hand. We're still in second place and only two points behind top of the table Arsenal. So our win here against Chelsea will put us back to the top of the Premier League with a game in hand, which would be phenomenal as we enter into April. So this is the team that we're putting out there for the game against Chelsea. It's Perry in goal, a back four of Estupinian, Dunk, Diamande and Walker-Peters, Berg and Andre in midfield, Fatty, Smithrow and Abada behind Tammy Abraham up front. Um, Evan Ferguson not fully fit after the international break, which is why he's uh, sitting this one out. He is my normal nailed on starting striker, but you know, Tammy's great, especially against his former club, Chelsea. I feel like he's going to have a point to prove. It's all about having points to prove today, apparently. Um, and in Rico Lewis news, despite him still being glitched out and unable to play for us, he has made his England debut. So we are going to have, when he signs for us permanently in the summer, an England international right back. So I think that'll probably be the end of Walker Peters. He can be moved on in the summer. And we did turn down an offer for him from a Saudi Arabian club back in January once we realised we'd somehow glitched Lewis. I, I don't. I mean, it's a beta. That's the thing. It still says at the bottom of the screen, this is a beta version. Things like that will happen from time to time. This is why um, when people say, Kev, can I start my main save during the beta and it just roll over? I mean, they do roll over, but there can still be bugs and glitches in there that will be resolved by the time the full game comes out. So do so at your own risk. And that's just what's happened here. Tammy Abraham is in, though. And that's a decent save from the Chelsea keeper. It remains nil-nil. But Fatty and Abraham combining there to create themselves a good chance. And we've now got a set piece. And obviously, big, tall Tammy in the middle as well. And that's who we're aiming for. Abraham at the far post. If anything, the corner was probably a little bit over hit. And Tammy had a little bit too much to do. But we're going to get another attempt at it. Another in-swinger from Berg from this left-hand side. Tammy's lurking at the far post again. So I guess that's where we're aiming. There is Abraham. And it's another good save from Sanchez in goal for Chelsea. He seems to... Uh, I mean, obviously... Obviously, Tammy's got the motivation to score against his former club. Sanchez seems quite motivated to stop his former club scoring against him. So it's a bit of a battle between those two today. And at the moment, Robert Sanchez definitely seems to be winning. Nil-nil at half time. Arsenal are playing at the same time as us, it seems. They're two and up away against Forest. So actually, we weren't going to be able to go to back to the top of the league today anyway. But if we do draw while Arsenal win... Although we'll still have those two games in hand, being four points behind them does start to make it a little bit harder to catch up because obviously the games come thick and fast. We're expecting to be in the Conference League all the way through to the very end. We're still in the FA Cup as well. We could really do with points on the board rather than games in hand. And... Uh, we need to beat Chelsea. I mean, it shows how far we've come that we're a little bit disappointed we're not beating Chelsea yet, but Ansu Fati with the chance for a break, but the highlight just kind of peters out and we've got some tired legs coming off the back of an international break like we just have. Estupinian's going to go off. Fati's going to go off. It's Pedro and Valley who both come on and hopefully come on with goals in them from somewhere. We're offering some encouragement to our boys as well as we see them just continuing to tie Although, to be fair, not as tired as the Chelsea players are. They look absolutely shattered. But Berg is tired. So, Vermeeren can come on for him. We'll swap those two over. Um, and I think we now throw Evan Ferguson on. 
just to just to hope to hopefully grab a goal. Ferguson's our best striker. He might not have as many goals yet this season as Tammy, but he does link things up better with the three players behind him. And hopefully that's what we're about to see here. Pedro plays it back to Dunk. Dunk looking for options ahead of him instead plays it infield to Vermeeren who is getting better and better as the season goes on by the way Vermeeren really starting to look like a star and now João Pedro I think that's a penalty kick he may I mean it's one that's similar to the Odegaard one in the previous match that you saw it's right on the edge of the penalty area but that one may just be a penalty it's not it's exactly the same situation Pedro, I mean, he was running across the corner of the penalty area and we don't even get to see the free kick. So presumably we did absolutely nothing with it. Right, who have we got? We've got Sunset is the only real attacking change we can make. So he's going to come on for Emil Smith-Rowe and we are going to hope that we can find a winner here from somewhere. We are on the attack. Ten minutes to go. We don't get to see the highlight. I mean, Chelsea have been the better team today. We are starting to show the signs of playing an awful lot of football. And remember... The reason we were top of the league is because we had such a good run of not having to play against anybody any good. What that means is in these final eight games of the season, we have to play against all of our, I'm going to do it in air quotes, title rivals because maybe we're not in a title race after all. If we look at what our run in is in the league, we've still got to play Manchester United, Bournemouth, who were great earlier in the year but have fallen back down to mid-table. Um, Middlesbrough, who we wouldn't need to worry about. To be fair, Middlesbrough, West Ham, Brentford. Then we do play... Ma you know what? I'm talking absolute nonsense. We've got Man United and Man City, but the rest of this run, six of our eight games are Bournemouth, Middlesbrough, West Ham, Brentford, Crystal Palace, Sheffield United. We've got to win the Premier League, folks. We're one point behind with two games in hand. If we don't win the Premier League from here, we've bottled it a little bit, haven't we? Can you bottle the Premier League as Brighton? I'm not sure you can. We might actually have a rest from the Premier League in tomorrow's episode as well because we've got all this cup stuff going on as well. So we might do a cup double header tomorrow. Leverkusen second leg, Chelsea in the FA Cup semi-final and then I guess focus back in on what will hopefully be the title run-in and the semi-finals of the Conference League from there. It's going to be a busy rest of the week but fingers crossed we can end it with, with at least one trophy. We've still got a chance to win three. That might end up costing us. We should probably pick one and go, oh, I've been in this situation before and it never ends well. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.